Hello my friends, how are you doing? It is time for some more secret sauce and today I'm going to show you the difference between opacity and flow and this will really advance your photo editing game. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, I want to remind you of my stay at home deal, which is special to support you during Corona time. All of my pro packs together in one bundle for 75% off. Take advantage of that as long as it still goes on. Okay, let's get started. So when you select your brush up here, you see opacity and flow. And you need that in a lot of occasions, but a lot of people don't even know what that is or how to use that. So I want to explain it to you and make it really, really simple. So here is the way to think about that. If you think about opacity, think about sunglasses. Sunglasses have a fixed value when they when you put them on, on how much light they will block out. So you can't change that. The only way you can change that is when you put on a second pair of sunglasses and they block out more light. Okay, so this is what opacity does. It has a fixed value on how much it lets through. Now we have flow. If you think about flow, think about water at a beach. If you have shallow water, it looks like it's really clear and has no color on its own. But the deeper the water gets, the more the water adds up on top of itself, the more color it has, the darker it looks and suddenly you see that water is actually blue. So this is what flow does. Let's look at this in practice. Okay, I will make a new layer and here's a secret sauce I want to give you. So when you use this, I want to suggest to you to set your document to 16-bit instead of 8-bit because otherwise you can get some really ugly color bending. So I will show you. Up here, document, convert format. This is set to 16 right now, but usually when you open it, it's set to 8. So let's convert this to 8 and I will put down some strokes here and I paint here. And then when you zoom in, this looks like it's a painting of mountains. That is not good. That is not smooth, not what we want. So let's delete this and then go up to document, convert format, set it from RGB 8 to RGB 16 and click on convert. And now if I do the very same thing, I paint here and I zoom in, you can see as nice and smooth as it should be. So this is perfect. Okay, let's use that. Good. Okay, so let's go to the explanation of what the brushes actually do or the settings of opacity and flow to be specific. So let's set flow to 100% and then let's set opacity to 25%, for example, like that. Good. I will set the, the hardness to 100% right now. So we have a hard outside. And you can see now if I paint here and I don't pick up my finger from the mouse. This is just the first paint stroke. This will overlap, but not add any more color. The color stays at 25%, even though this is set to black. So nothing changes. I have to do a second stroke and you can see here, this now adds the same amount of color on top of the color we already had here. And now I do the same with the third third stroke and fourth and fifth and sixth and seven and eight, nine, and 10. This is what opacity does. It adds a fixed value within one stroke. Okay, now let's go opacity 100 and then set flow to, let's say 5%. And by the way, you will immediately see, let's set it to 10%, that this works a little bit different. So if I make a stroke here, you get these kind of overlaps here because now you can suddenly see the individual, how can I say, stamps that are actually made as the brush. So a brush is basically just a lot of stamps behind each other. So in this case, what you want to do is to set the hardness lower so you don't see that. Let's set the hardness to zero in that case, basically. Let's go back here. And then you can see now it's nice and smooth. And you can see if I do one stroke, this is just my first stroke and I overlap this, this adds more and more color. And this is like what you know from when you use a brush on paper or you use a marker on paper, stuff like that. So you can really naturally and easy build up your gradients and your color stuff like that. 
So this is the difference. In opacity, the color stays in the same opacity throughout the stroke. In flow, it adds color throughout the stroke like water would do. Let's look at a practical example of where to use that. Well, basically, you can use it everywhere you use a brush, like dodge and burn, like using a mask, like painting on color, stuff like that. So I will show you a very simple dodge and burn effect. Let's look here. I add a pixel layer on top of my photo, and then I set this pixel layer to soft light like that. And then I take my brush, Opacity 100, flow 25, hardness 0, and now add my color. So I choose my color over here. You click on this little icon here. This opens up your color window and you can leave it open while you paint. So in this case, 50% gray is neutral, doesn't do anything. But if you take anything that's lighter than 50%, it makes the picture brighter. And if you use anything darker than 50%, it makes the picture darker. So you can use this, for example, here in the hair, we can add a little bit of 3D effect by saying, we want to make these elements, these areas here a little bit darker. And you have full control over this because you're painting on the effects. You can see here, it's a slight change, but I get more darkness in my shadows. And then I can go here to over 50%, I can say, I want to bring out these highlights a little bit more like that. So let's make my brush a little bit smaller. So we get the smaller details over here and down here. It's very nice. And you can see over time, you can make the hair look very nice, very dynamic. You can really paint the elements here like you want. And also on the skin, by the way, to make it softer, to form the shapes of the body, how, uh, how flat they are, how round they are. If you want to set certain highlights on the lips, on the nose, stuff like that, or reduce highlights, shininess on the skin, you can do a lot with that. So. For example, let's turn on and off this layer. You can see this actually adds an effect that makes the hair look more 3D, more active, a little bit more glorious. So you can do some really cool things with that. So this is one example how you use that. You can also use it with masks, stuff like that. When I'm painting, for example, a mask where I don't really have much control over what I'm seeing right now, I'm more going with 100% flow, but reduced opacity, let's say, for example, 20% or 15%, because this gives me more control over how much I'm actually adding. Because with a mask, sometimes you can't really see what you're doing. Right now, you can see it because it's set up in a way so you can actually see what's going on uh, inside of the mask because this is basically reducing, you can now see the background, but sometimes you can't see it. And I feel like this gives me a lot more control over how much I actually add in areas where it's kind of hard to see, if you know what I mean. That's everything for this video. And by the way, answer me this in the comments. What is your favorite platform to upload pictures on the internet? Stuff like, for example, 500 pics or Flickr or Instagram. Maybe it's Facebook. I don't know. Where do you upload your pictures the most? If you liked it, leave a like and maybe subscribe to my channel. If you do, hit the little bell icon. And if you want to see more of me right now, maybe watch this video about Dodge and Burn or this video about masks that I will link in the video description also in the pinned comments. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.